Colton Tack and on Sonic and OK KFNX 2020 back with more of the 1994 Chevrolet S Blazer tape. We're going to play Tag 2 now. We just don't want to have any more filler before playing tapes, so. so yeah, seriously, we want no more filler, no more filler, no more filler, no, 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 no more filler. So yeah, no more filler. Anyway, um, <clears throat> let's see if the tape's in. Yep, it's in. Let's play it right now. Three, two, one. Let's take a look at the selected options and features. Let's turn it down a bit. This part of the program discusses trailering tips, cautions, and special options you may have purchased to customize your new blazer. There will be a few seconds of silence between each selection. Child restraint procedures. For the safety of children and infants traveling in your vehicle, you should always secure them in an infant or child seat restraint according to applicable laws. The information or instructions included with the infant or child seat will specify whether it should be used with an infant or an older child. With General Motors truck safety belts, there is no additional equipment necessary to secure the child or infant seat restraint in your vehicle unless the restraint requires a top anchor as specified by the restraint installation instructions. There are some very important procedures to follow when transporting an infant or child in your vehicle. A few tips to remember are first, never hold a baby in your arms while you're riding in a vehicle. In a collision or sudden stop, the child will become almost impossible to hold. Second, when using a child seat restraint system, be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the restraint. These restraints use the belt system of your vehicle but the child also has to be secured within the child seat restraint to help reduce the chance of personal injury. The child seat restraint must be properly secured. Third, if your child restraint has a top strap, it will need to be anchored. You can have your GM dealer install an anchor bracket, or your dealer can instruct you on the installation procedures if you want to install the anchor yourself. If the child restraint has a top strap, Always secure the restraint device at the location where the top strap can be anchored. Finally, be sure to properly secure any child seat restraint device in your vehicle, even when no passenger is in it. An unsecured child seat can move around in a collision or sudden stop and injure people in the vehicle. For complete information on installing a child or infant restraint system in your vehicle, be sure to read section 1 of your owner's manual. This information is of vital importance for the safety of you and your passengers. Off-road driving. For the safety of both you and your passengers, please drive your blazer carefully, both on and off-road. Two important factors to keep in mind when off-roading are that you and your passengers must always wear your safety belts, and you should always drive on marked trails only. Also, Make sure that loads you're carrying are properly secured to prevent them from moving when the terrain gets rough. For more information on off-roading safety tips and driving procedures, be sure to read Section 4 in your owner's manual. Trailering Tips Your new Chevy Blazer is a versatile vehicle designed to carry people and cargo. But bear in mind that towing a trailer and or carrying cargo will affect handling, durability, and fuel economy. The certification label on the driver's door lock pillar offers information on maximum gross vehicle weight, maximum gross axle weight your vehicle can safely handle, and recommended tire inflation pressures. The maximum loaded trailer weight your vehicle can tow depends on the total weight of the vehicle, including passengers, cargo, and additional options purchased. To learn more about the trailering aspects of your blazer, your Chevy dealer can supply you with product literature, which includes trailering tips and cautions, and can assist you in determining that your needs don't exceed the load or trailering capabilities of your new vehicle. When trailering, you need to keep in mind that if the loaded weight of the trailer exceeds 1,000 pounds, the trailer must have its own brakes, and the hitch you use is important as well. 
if you're using an aftermarket hitch make sure it is properly installed and adjusted two very important hitch considerations for trailer weights over two thousand pounds are that one the hitch is of the frame mounted weight distributing type and two a sway control system of adequate capacity is installed remember improper trailering or not following recommended trailering tips and cautions may cause handling problems as a special note with the step bumper if you use a lightweight trailer be sure to check the clearances of the trailer tongue at the inner sides of the bumper this is advisable because some trailer tongue rests could cause the trailer to dent your bumper when making sharp turns see section 4 in the owner's manual for precautions and special techniques to use when towing a trailer that background music i never heard it before yet four wheel drive with four-wheel drive, you'll be able to keep your vehicle moving through a wide variety of road conditions. However, you should avoid driving on dry pavement while in four-wheel drive. Driving with four wheels engaged on dry pavement can increase tire wear, cause hard transfer case shifting, and reduce fuel economy. If you have a manual Instatrack system, you can shift from two-wheel drive to four-high, or from four-high back to two-wheel drive while the vehicle is moving at any speed. The front axle portion of the diagram on the transfer case shift console will light up when you shift into a four-wheel drive mode. And remember that it's normal for the front axle light to come on or go off after a slight delay when shifting into or out of a four-wheel drive mode. However, if the front axle light does not come on after shifting into a four-wheel drive mode, or the light stays on after shifting out of a four-wheel drive mode, see your authorized Chevrolet dealer for a system check. To shift a vehicle with the manual Instatrack system into or out of four low or neutral, vehicle speed must be below three miles per hour. To begin this process, place the transmission in neutral with an automatic transmission or depress the clutch with a manual transmission. Then press the transfer case shift button on the shifter lever and shift with one continuous motion. Don't pause in the neutral range of the transfer case when shifting into four low, as this could result in some gear clash. And keep in mind that the neutral position of your Instatrack system should only be used if the vehicle is being towed. Refer to sections four and five of the owner's manual for additional information on towing your blazer. If your blazer is equipped with the electronic transfer case, shifting from two-wheel drive to four high or four low is as easy as pushing a button on your instrument panel and following some simple procedures. A two-position rocker switch in the upper left part of the instrument panel controls this feature. The rocker switch has three functions. If neither light on the rocker switch is illuminated, the transfer case is in the two-wheel drive mode. Pressing the top of the switch will actuate a blinking green light, indicating that the transfer case is about to shift from two-wheel drive to four-high. When the vehicle has shifted from two-wheel drive to four-high, the green light will remain illuminated. To shift from four-high back into two-wheel drive at any speed, press the top of the switch again. When the vehicle is shifted to the two-wheel drive mode, the green light will go out. To shift into four low from two wheel drive or four high, press the bottom of the rocker switch. Pressing the bottom of the switch will actuate a blinking amber light, denoting that the transfer case is about to shift into four low. You can press the lower portion of the rocker switch for four low while the vehicle is moving, but the transfer case will not shift into four low until vehicle speed is less than three miles per hour and the automatic transmission is in neutral or the clutch is depressed with a manual transmission. When the transfer case is in four low, the amber light on the rocker switch will remain illuminated. To shift out of four low, you must first shift to four high before you can shift to two wheel drive. Do this by placing the transmission in neutral if it's an automatic, or by pushing the clutch in if you have a manual transmission. Then press the top of the rocker switch. This will activate the green light on the switch and cause it to blink. Now if you slow the vehicle to under 3 miles per hour, the transfer case will engage the 4 high drive mode. The green light will stop blinking, but remain illuminated when the shift to 4 high is complete. Wait until the green light stops blinking before you put the transmission in gear or release the clutch pedal. To shift into two-wheel drive, press the top of the button again. When the blinking green light goes out, 
you're in the two wheel drive mode for more information on the transfer case operation helpful off road driving tips and maintenance procedures see sections two four and six of your owner's manual tilt wheel to change the angle of the steering wheel pull the short lever on the steering column behind the turn signal lever toward you and raise or lower the wheel to suit your needs cruise control the cruise control switches are mounted on the end of the multi-function turn signal lever to engage the cruise control first turn it on then accelerate to the desired speed and push the set button on the end of the turn signal lever the cruise control disengages when you depress the brake pedal or clutch pedal or move the control switch to the off position the off position will erase the memory of the cruise control to resume your preset speed after braking Momentarily move the switch to the RA, resume accelerate position. At speeds above 25 miles per hour, the system automatically recalls your preset speed. For more information on cruise control, see section 2 in your owner's manual. Air conditioning. Besides the heating and ventilation operations described on side 1 of this tape, there are additional controls for the air conditioner. The left slide lever allows you to control the temperature of the air entering the interior. The right slide lever allows you to choose various operating modes which will help cool or heat your blazer's interior. For maximum cooling, the max AC position recirculates interior air with very little outside air. Use this position with the temperature lever in the full down position. The norm AC position pulls in outside air cools it and then discharges it through the upper dashboard outlets. The bi-level AC position directs air through the upper and lower outlets. For more detailed information on the air conditioning system in your blazer, refer to section 3 in your owner's manual. AM FM stereo radio with seek scan, digital clock and stereo cassette tape player. To play an audio tape, insert it with the exposed edge entering first. The tape will snap into position when it's fully inserted. Forward and reverse arrows allow you to move through your tape quickly. The DNR, Dynamic Noise Reduction button, reduces background hiss on both the radio and cassette tapes. To switch playing sides of the tape without removing it, press the PROG, Program button, on the cassette player. As a special note, be sure to avoid using C120 tapes in your player. These tapes are very thin and may break or get tangled in the drive mechanism. Ugh. For information and maintenance tips for your tape player, see section 3 of your owner's manual. Tapes getting tangled. I didn't like it. AM stereo, FM stereo radio with seek, scan, digital clock and stereo cassette tape player with search and graphic equalizer. To play an audio tape, insert it with the exposed edge entering first. The tape will snap into position when fully inserted. To advance the tape, press the forward button. To rewind to an earlier portion of the tape, press the reverse button. To stop the forward or reverse movement, press the opposite button lightly. To listen to the next selection on a cassette tape, push the search button to the right and then to press the forward button. The tape will automatically stop at the next selection. To replay the current tape selection, push the search button to the right and then to press the reverse button. To switch playing sides of the tape without removing it, press the upper left volume control knob. By pushing the loud button, you can boost bass frequencies at low volumes. The CRO2 chromium dioxide button adjusts the audio quality for chromium or metal tapes. And the AMST button is for AM stereo broadcasts. I know that. The graphic equalizer adjusts the frequency response ranges of your stereo. As a special note, avoid using C120 tapes in your player. These tapes are very thin and may break or get tangled in the drive mechanism. For information and maintenance tips for your tape player, see section 3 of the owner's manual. Once again, tapes getting tangled. I didn't like it. Electric tailgate glass release. What? An electric tailgate glass release Never switch is that. mounted on the instrument panel to the left of the radio. For the switch to work,
The automatic transmission must be in either park or neutral, and with manual transmissions, the parking brake must be set. Just push the release switch to open the tailgate glass. If your Blazer is equipped with a tailgate-mounted spare tire carrier, the carrier arm must be unlatched and moved out of the way for the tailgate glass to fully open. Section 2 of the owner's manual offers more information on this convenience feature. Electric Rear Wiper Washer The rear wiper washer is controlled by a switch mounted on the upper left side of the instrument panel. This switch has a wipe position and a momentary wash position. Although the front and rear washers use the same fluid reservoir, the system is designed so the rear washer will run out of fluid before the front washer. If the rear washer fails to work, be sure to refill the washer fluid reservoir in the engine compartment. Fog lamps. To operate the fog, fog lamps. lamps, turn on the headlights and press the fog lamp switch located under the headlight switch. A light on the switch illuminates to remind you the fog lamps are on. The fog lamps go off when the headlights are switched to high beams. When the headlights are switched back to low beams, the fog lamps will come on again. Press the fog lamp switch to turn the lamps off. Remote keyless entry system. Okay. With the remote keyless entry system, locking okay. and unlocking your vehicle is as easy as touching a button. There are three buttons on your remote control unit. Pressing the unlock button once will open the driver's door. Pressing this same button again within five seconds will unlock all the doors. Pressing the button with the tailgate glass symbol will unlock the tailgate glass, but only when the automatic transmission is in park or the parking brake is applied with a manual transmission. And finally, pressing the door button will lock all the doors. For additional information on this convenience feature, be sure to consult section 2 of your owner's manual. Are we ever going to get to the engine block heater? Like, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Engine block heater. Finally! This feature is designed to keep your engine block warm for improved cold weather starting. To use the heater, open the hood and unwrap the electrical cord stowed in the engine compartment. Plug the cord into any three-pronged 110 volt AC outlet. If the cord is too short, use a heavy-duty three-prong extension cord. This completes part two of this audio presentation. We thank you for taking the time to listen. And again, congratulations on the purchase of your S-Blazer. Okay, it seems like the tape might be almost done spinning for now. Um, while I wait for this tape to finish spinning, I just want to tell all you viewers out there, like, I almost forgot to tell you about the people who requested me, you know, that, that Leapster cartridge, you know, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I'll show you once the tape is done spinning. So anyway, there are some differences about this tape, you know, the electric tailgate, whatever it's called. Um, are, were there ever tailgates on s blazers like i'm not really sure if that's actually true and also um <clears throat> about the music background on the engine block heater part that was one of the music backgrounds i recognized in one of the you know in multiple uh oh seems like the tape's almost done okay so let's take it out now so about that tape um you know Anyway, about the music selection, background music, you know, the background music in the engine block heater in this tape. Um, about it, um, it's one of those background music I recognized in the other Chevrolet tapes, you know, in, you know, most likely the 1995 tapes, the 1995 Chevrolet tapes. So, um, I did not expect that to be up there, but that's, that's nice. It's probably the first time it's ever been there with talking, so... That took a little long to wait, but that's awesome. So anyway, um, that's going to do it. So anyway, um, before we end this video, like I said, I'll take a look at the people who requested Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends for the Leafster. So, oh, the freaking tripod needs to stop moving like that. Okay, so let's just take a look at the people who requested the cartridge. 
Okay, so I've looked up one of the videos that were on my channel. I looked through the comments and took a look at some people that eventually requested the, the Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends Leapster cartridge. The YouTube, user, the YouTube users that requested it were Joy Galler and Barry Davis 2. So, um, so Joy Galler and Barry Davis 2, if you're watching this, I hope you're satisfied. So that cartridge will come in the mail within a week or so. And when that cartridge comes, I'm going to eventually, like, do a Leafster demo on it. So that's going to be it. Anyway, that's going to be it for side two of the 1994 Chevrolet Chevy Trucks cassette on the S Blazer. Um, I'm not sure what's going to be the next Chevrolet cassette to get. Maybe it could either be, like, the 1994 Suburban or maybe, like, uh... Maybe a 1993 Chevrolet cassette. I'm, I'm not really sure yet. I haven't even found out yet. So, um... I'll think about it, like, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But anyway, that's it, so, I'll see you guys next time for another video. Anyway, this is Colton Tackett on Sonic and OKKO OK Fanatic 2020 signing off. Peace out, everybody. Have a great time.